everyone and welcome or welcome back to the channel if you are a regular here. Today I'm back in Worlds of Wonder which I haven't coloured in for a little bit so I thought it would be a good idea to get back into this one. I am going to be working on this page with the floating flying bed and I want to do a space background today so I'm a bit excited so to start with I am just going to go over the whole page in gesso and I'll show you quickly how I do that and then how I prep it afterwards I will be using a lot of mixed media with this one so while I'm just showing you how I'm doing this I'll just let you know I'll be using my polychromos set I will also be using some Faber-Castell soft pastels and I've got the little mini set, I've only got the 24 set of those and I'm also going to be using some acry white acrylic paint and I'm, one of the things I'm using today that I haven't used before so I'm testing this out for the first time today is something called Powder Blender and I've been wanting to try this out for a while so I'm really excited to see how we can make this space scene um, really nice and sort of soft with soft edges and soft blending with that so I'm excited to see what we can do with this so we are nearly done with the gesso so once I'm done with this I'm just going to leave it to dry completely and then I'm going to go over it with some sandpaper and just sort of sand down as many lumps and bumps as I can. I've got this little block here and I've just ripped off one of the little um, sandpaper bits of that. So this is one of the ones that you can use for like your, your pencils and stuff to get pigment off of and uh, I just thought that would be easy enough to uh, to use so I'm just trying to sand down any sort of lumps or bumps or anything that I had I did end up missing a couple of spots that it didn't get completely smooth here and you can sort of see a little bit but with the type of background we are doing and with the layering we're doing it actually didn't matter too much we I ended up with a fairly nice and smooth result anyway although sort of halfway through you can still see it and I will show you what I mean a bit later so I'm just sort of checking here and obviously I missed those spots um, that wasn't completely smooth but I was fairly happy at this point so at this point I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start going over it with my pencils now one of the things I noticed pretty much straight away was that I didn't get as much grip as I wanted to so I actually ended up going ahead and using a fixative and this is also another element that you're going to need when you're using powder blender you're going to need a workable fixative because what the powder blender does is make your pencils kind of into pastels so it means that they'll come off much easier so you're going to need to uh, use a fixative in between your layers just to make sure that when you've gotten to a point where you're happy and you want to start adding more layers you need to fix that first layer so it doesn't move around and if you go in and erase things afterwards that you don't erase all the way down to the paper so I ended up spraying before I used this pencil I ended up spraying on my fixative and the fixative I used was the same as with um, the same brand as I used for my powder blender which is called brush and pencil but I think you can use any kind of workable fixative that's sort of meant for pastel um, and those sort of mediums so as you can see I'm just sort of plotting in the random little dots at the moment they're sort of yeah just randomly placed I'm not going in overly I don't know I'm not really thinking too much here I'm just adding in some color I just want to block in where I want the lighter areas of my space scene to be and then we're going to add in sort of more colors and I don't have to be too neat here with my pencils just because the powder blender will really sort of smoosh it all out really really nicely 
so at least if it's working the way I'm hoping it will work. Now one of the things I have heard about the powdered blender is that they, te sem they seem to work better on oil based pencils. Luckily that's what I'm using today so we should be fine. But yes, I have heard they're not, unless you put down a layer first of the powder blender before you start putting pencils down, um, that's the only way you can use it if you're using wax based. So you'll be using a little bit more of that powder if you're using wax based pencils. So now that I've blocked in my light areas as well as sort of not circled but blocked out where I want pretty much no color added I'm gonna go in now with my red violet and I'm gonna start with my darker areas so I'm really gonna have this go out to the top left corner and I'm also gonna use this color sort of down towards the bottom right corner as well and I'll also add a little bit sort of in between because when you look at sort of the space scenes they do have dark areas sort of in in between here and there we've got those light bits and it will just make it more alive blender before I'd love to hear about it what did you think 
Um, do you have any tips or tricks that you want to share with us? I'd love it if you would add that all in the comments down below. And um, yeah, share any tips you might have. Because, well, I'm new to this as well, so I'm open to suggestions if you have anything that you think might help. darken now with the cap at Morton Violet I'm working my way out to those corners as I mentioned and I'm having keeping that lighter area there sort of around the bed don't know if you're noticing with my pencil I am barely putting down any pressure at all I'm holding it very light I'm holding it nearly sideways just to get most of the sort of side of the pencil rather than the tip down onto the paper 
so I'm just trying to get as much color down as quickly as I can for this to try and reduce the amount of time it takes and that is one of the benefits from what I've understood about this powder blender is that we can put the pencil down like this really rough and quick and um, and then blend it out afterwards so as you can see I don't know if you can notice there on the left hand side where I put the color down there's a dot there so clearly there was a spot that I didn't get sanded down enough and there are some lines there however I'm not too worried about that as I'm layering it um, it up and spraying fixatives and adding more layers that will will pretty much disappear and because I will be adding some acrylic paint and things to it later on as well I can always just add some more around that area if I need to if it's not um, blended out as much as I need so don't worry too much this is one of those great scenes where you can make a bit of a mess and there are definite ways of fixing it afterwards So I'm going to go in now with my Delft Blue. Unfortunately, my recording stopped pretty much exactly here. And as you can see, I've added it in towards that top left-hand side. So I'm just going to keep adding that in here. And I'm going to pretty much go out um, sort of all around um, up on the top, on the top areas there and underneath the bed as well. So just keep going because I want it quite dark on these sort of outer edges. I'm trying to be a little bit neater just around the star there and I'm trying not to get too much color on top of anything like any of the line work. But it doesn't really matter because you can easily sort of erase that afterwards anyway. anyway because you've got that fixative underneath. It kind of makes it like... A little bit similar to sanded paper to color on not as rough but it does help when you're going to then erase things So for my top left corner here, I'm going to go in with my black just so I have a really dark base for anything else that I'm adding. Now I know my paper that's underneath there, you can see there's a bit of a line there. However, it doesn't matter. When I blend this out, it's not going to show up. And I will remove that little clip a bit later just so I can go under it. But because I'm using the fixative and things, I want my page to lie as flat as possible because that fixative dries pretty hard so I don't want any cracks or anything like that to show up in on my page. So I'm just going underneath the bed now and using the same Delft blue and black that I use up the top in exactly the same way sort of working my way to the opposite corner so i'm going to go in towards the um, bottom right hand side it's going to be my very darkest area
I'm just going to go ahead and add a few more layers here before I start blending. So I'm going to get a little bit of this magenta color in there. I think that's going to look really nice and a little bit brighter than that um, red violet that's underneath here. So sort of in between here and there, I'll go in with that magenta and create a little bit of a brighter area. Now the first time we do blend here, I'm literally just going to smoosh everything together. It's going to be relatively the sort of smooth transitions here. You're not going to see too many details, but that's the things that we're going to add in later on as we add a layer of fixative and then start another layer on top. If you are enjoying this video, I would love it if you take the time to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and to help me push the video out to a wider audience. And if you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe. And if you click the notification bell, you'll get notified whenever I post new videos. So I'm just going to add some more blue, bluish purpley tones just up on top of this black here. So I'm doing another little quick layer of Delft blue and then I'm going to go in with the mauve um, over the top as well just to sort of darken it. It's a really nice dark deep sort of purpley tone and I really like it um, especially for these sort of dark areas here. I will be adding some brighter blues as well a bit later on but I want these sort of purple undertones to really shine through a little bit as well and especially sort of every here and there they can sort of shine through by themselves as well and that will create a lot of depth and a lot of life.
okay I think I'm starting to get happy with the amount of pigment I've got down on the paper so let's get out the powder blender so this is the powder blender that I'm using it's by brush and pencil and it will literally work by almost turning my pencils into pastel pencils so I'm just putting a little bit on my soft tool so these tools are the ones that I often use together with pan pastels and they work really well to um, to smoosh out um, like the pencil the pencil strokes with the powder blender you do not need a lot of powder blender on here sorry I'm moving my book around a little bit much uh, a little bit too much here now you will see soon that these sort of lines are starting to smoosh together a little bit more. So I'm just trying to be a little bit careful in here where there is sort of light and I don't want to get them too much on top of these lines that are here. So I'm working just with my tip here and I have sped this up by the way um, just so because it was a fairly long repetitive process here so I've just sped it up just to um, not make this video exceptionally long for you guys I think you get the point just by watching what I'm doing here so doing in between these sort of lines I'm just going in with the very tip just sort of trying to uh, smoosh out the lines a little bit so I've started working as you could see in my lighter areas and then I'm going to move out afterwards sort of towards the dark areas just so I don't go in on the dark areas first and then contaminate my lighter areas too much. So I'm just sort of smushing, smushing this around. As I said, you don't need a whole lot of powder on there. You just sort of dip it in and um, I'm not pressing too hard either. Um, Obviously, this is, I'm obviously working in a coloring book, so what you could do as well is work on something like pastel mat paper um, or um, any other sort of sanded, sanded paper. You're also going to get a really good result, but obviously this was already in a book and I don't have a fun functioning printer at the moment, so I couldn't put this onto any different kind of paper so I'm working with what I've got which is why I've also sprayed that fixative on my paper before I started putting down my coloring pencil as you can see now the pencil lines are starting to go away and it's we're smushing this pencil out into sort of the white areas and smoothing up really nicely
So I've finished blending for now. I'm going to go ahead and add some more pencil before I add any fixative. The reason for that is that I'm going to use some erasing techniques and things on this and the second I spray a fixative down I can't erase anything underneath that layer. It makes it all stick. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more pencil and then I'm going to go in and erase little bits and pieces just to create a little bit more life in the picture and then it's going to look cool when we then add more layers on afterwards. So I'm just going to go in and sort of freshen up these lines a little bit more, just making sure that they are nice and sharp. So I'm going in very gently here uh, around the star and then uh, I'll be going doing the same thing sort of around the bed and all of those sort of lines and everything that are there.
just going in now and just blending out some of those extra pencil bits that I just added in and um, then I reckon I might go, go ahead and start doing a little bit of erasing here and there. So now I'm actually going over those sort of areas that are left blank I'm sort of starting to add in a little bit of color there and then I'm literally going to go over it again afterwards and erase things again. So I'm using two different types of erasers today. I'm going to be using my little electric swivel eraser. Be super careful if you use one of these. Don't go too harshly down onto the paper. Just like little bits like that. And it will leave quite a decent chunk of, uh, of white on the paper. As I said, the, uh, the powder blender kind of makes the pencil almost turn into like a pastel so I I have no issues getting the that pigment off of the paper again afterwards so these are sort of the areas that will stand out a little bit later on they'll be a little bit lighter when I then um, then I can add some sort of lighter maybe some yellow tones some cream tones in there to make it sort of shine a little bit and then um, I'll probably always add a little bit of whites and things towards the end but it will allow me now to add in a few more colors that I couldn't before because they would have just blended in completely mushed in with the others so that's why I'm adding those in later by erasing a little bit of the pigment I've already got and I'm also going to be using, in addition to this eraser, I have a kneaded eraser as well. And it's a little bit more softer. It's not so um, harsh uh, like this one here. Obviously, you can see it leaves a pretty bright mark, white mark. So when I then go in with a kneaded eraser, I can kind of go in and just keep kneading it and pick up pigment from... Um, sort of a larger area without it being crazy white afterwards so here we go I've just broken off a little piece of it and I just keep kneading it in my hands and I'm just sort of using it like this dabbing it on and especially if you're using um, like sanded paper with this you have no issues getting uh, getting your pigment off So just spinning this up a little bit for you so it's not so long and tedious but I'm going to be doing this pretty much all over the picture just sort of little areas here and there that we can then then add some different colors in because obviously when you have the space you have those sort of cloudy areas um, as well so I thought that's sort of what I'm aiming for with these sort of things so I'm going to do this for the entire picture and I'll show you afterwards how many sort of cloudy dotty areas that I've got All 
right so this is as you can see I've added several sort of dotted little areas around there are they're sort of all over the place probably the only one I haven't done too much is just up in that top left corner everywhere else I've added these little dots so just let's go ahead now I've added my fixative now um, in between um, showing you that um, those dots and adding more color now I've sprayed it with the fixative and I've left it for 15 minutes just to set so now I've got a nice sort of textured surface again and I'm ready to then add more pencils because I now have got more tooth to work with Thank you. 
I mentioned before that the areas that I erased I might add some lighter yellowy tones so I'm going to go in with the cream now and I'm going to add that to some of those little dots that we that we erased before just to add in that little bit of yellowness and, and that light that sort of makes it kind of look like it's a little bit of a light source in there.
can definitely see here now as I'm adding this red violet and the magenta that I had before how much more pigment I can lay down after I spray that fixative so it's a literally just retooth the whole paper and I've now got plenty of area that I can add more color to and every time I'm adding, adding a new layer of fixative I can add another few layers of coloring pencil so it's re really allowing me to build up that color and allowing us to create a really cool dimension and depth into our space scene
So I want to add some more blue tones on top of this black just to sort of, well, blue it up a bit more but still have that nice dark background. So the Indanthrin blue is really good for that. I've used it quite, usually, quite often when I do any kind of space or nighttime background and it's one of my favourite blues. So now that I feel I've got a fair amount of pigment down on the paper, I'm just going to go over again with my soft tool with the powder blender on there. So again, I'm starting in the lighter area and I'm working my way to the darker.
So I've just changed over the tip a little bit to a nice clean one and I'm just going back into the lighter areas now and just really working it in because the other one still had a bit of dark pigment on I didn't want to go too hard there so that's why I've changed it all over so you can of course wash these little um, tips these little spongy tips and uh, I just used a bit of warm water and some dish soap and that works a treat now if you're using this on something like sanded paper you will probably wear through them pretty quick but you can get quite a decent amount of these for not too much money so I'm not too worried about that So once again I'm going to add in some more pencil layers before I go in and add more fixative to this. Again it just allows me to erase if I want to and, um, and make any changes that I feel necessary. So I'll wait until the last minute possible to do the fixatives.
As you can see, I'm bringing in quite a few new colors now, and it doesn't really matter. You can bring in almost as many colors as you want. There are so many cool colors out in the sort of space, and just looking at all the various elements out in space, there's so many different colors, so just go for it.
so I'm really working now just to darken things up especially in these corners so I'm just finishing off with my black and I'm gonna add in some helio blue reddish I like this one it's quite for a dark color it's still really nice and bright so it's definitely a nice one to use for like a space scene and of course while I'm only showing you the very top part now just do this obviously in the opposite corner as well and just do the same thing on either side on both side of that bed you'll also notice that those areas up the top there that I did erase a little bit at they will turn out a little bit brighter blue than anything else that has got um, more of a color underneath it so right where I am there now um, it's going in a little bit dark, um, sort of brighter which I quite like that we're getting these sort of little variations in the background
so when I finish this final little blend here then I'm pretty certain I'm done with the coloring pencils and I'm gonna go in then with my Faber Castell soft pastels so I mentioned at the start that I have the 24 mini set and seriously I find that really really handy it's such a small set I can take it anywhere and really you don't really use that much pigment anyway so they last a long time Let's just have a quick look, I'm <laughs> zooming out here, of where we're at at the moment. I want to go in and darken things up a little bit more just sort of around the edges. So that's where these soft pastels are going to come into play. So let's go ahead and get those out. Now, I did film everything to do with soft pastels, I thought, and then my camera hadn't gone on so i'm just going to quickly show you what i did so this is what it looks like at the moment these are what the soft pastels look like i used that bright blue there right up the very top by the star and then i used a black in those corners i also added in a little bit of this sort of i don't know muted orangey tone there and i used these little um cotton pads to um, to smush it out with so those sort of lighter areas there are where I use that lighter tone and then that's up there I had the black and then as I mentioned up the middle top is where I had that bright blue so <laughs> I'm sorry I ended up not getting to show you how I use those but they are super super simple to use just rub the cotton pad onto the pastel and then rub it onto the paper so let's show you now what I'm going to do with the um, acrylic paint. I've got a toothbrush and I'm going to put the paint on like this and I'm just sort of flicking it onto the paper. I've just put a little bit of paper down just over the bed there. I just try not to get too much onto that one. So I just keep sort of flicking it down and this will give the illusion of sort of lots of far away stars I will go in I think with my Sakura jelly roll afterwards as well and add some slightly bigger stars but this will sort of help with those that sort of almost that cloudy effect so I'm just sort of whacking it around here and there and just sort of adding you actually have a fair amount of control with this I've just sort of put a bit of paper sort of around the top of above my picture and on the side and stuff to try and 
avoid splashing paint everywhere but I'm finding it's not really going too many other places than exactly where I want it so I'm finding I'm having a pretty good control over this and then I'm going to just let this dry and then I'll go going to go in with my Sakura jelly roll So the very last thing I'm going to do now is take my jelly roll, I'm using my 10 one which is the largest one I've got and I'm just going to be adding in more sort of stars that are a little bit bigger than the little flickers that I've managed to get with the uh, toothbrush and everything. So I'm trying to at least get them inside those light areas and I'm just sort of making them a little bit bigger and making them like rather than just like a dot right down I do sort of circle a little bit and I'm just going to put these all over the um, the page just wherever I feel like putting some little little stars and things so you can just go ahead and do that if you're following along and just place them wherever you you feel that needs a little bit of a star And once you've done all of this, you are all finished. So here you go, here is the final background. I'm really happy with how this turned out. There are certain things I probably would change. Um, if I did this again, I'd probably only gesso the bed itself and I'd probably leave the page itself um, alone and just use the fixative to make um, like the, the textured, the textured, um, page if that makes sense I think that will work fine without it I also found that the soft pastels clung better to the little tiny areas that wasn't um, gessoed as well so I think that's another note to self that I won't use that on gessoed surfaces again but I hope you guys have enjoyed following along with me today and learned a few things about a powdered blender. I sure did. And I wish you all a colorful day and I will see you again next time.